So, good evening, good evening. It's Moz here from Moz6510 Models, a channel dedicated to help you become a better scale modeler. Sorry, 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 it's a bit earlier tonight. Um, I've succumbed to doing a Zoom quiz night. So at 8 o'clock tonight I have um, to jump from this bench to my computer bench so that I can join up with some friends and some family to do a Zoom challenge. And I also apologise for last night. Um, sometimes in a day things doesn't quite go the way planned and I had some things I had to deal with. Um, nothing drastic, it's just basically uh, work and um, just trying to get things sorted. So, um, welcome along. Tonight I decided to talk about stirring paint. That is the title. So any questions that you have, any um, any tips that you have on um, preparing paint ready for painting, for airbrushing, um, and even finishing. Okay, so that's basically the realm. I've got a few things I'm going to go through that I do personally when I paint. And I thought that I would talk about it here tonight. All right. So looking in the chat, we've got Chancer NW. Good evening to you, sir. Uh, scale model kits. Hi. Nice seeing you on the on the chat. Uh, David Ravenscroft. Hi. Also, and History and Scale has joined us also in the chat. Any others that are watching, uh, please do um, put some questions, comments, thoughts, or if I'm doing something wrong or you think there's something a better way of doing it, please tell me so because um, we're going to talk about um, mixing paint. All right, cool. There's one thing I'm missing <laughs> is a Tamiya paint. One sec. It's always good that you have your stash available. So um, people have asked me um, why I, I like Humbrew. I think Humbrew is very underrated. It does cause issues. I'm no doubt about it. But I am a firm believer if you use product to product, right, you will get a good result. All right. So if you're using um, Humbrew acrylics, just buy their damn thinners. Okay. I know that Mr. Colour Leveling Thinner is very good with it as well. I understand all that. But, you know, on the safe side, if you're using Vallejo, or Vallejo, however you want to say it, I've been told it's Vallejo, Vallejo, or whatever it is, however you say it, use their thinners, okay? If you're using enamel, use enamel thinners. If you're using acrylics, use acrylic thinners. All right? That's the way I, I try to keep it going. And, you know... <laughs> Good job this ain't live, Moz. What isn't live? <laughs> Is it not live? <laughs> well, yeah. So, the first comfort... Sorry, let's go through some of the chats. Um, scale Model Kits has said, I use a matchstick just to stir it. Yes, that's a good point. Yeah, I think we all do as well. Um, scale Model Kits also then thin it. History Scale, first comfort. Um, comfort the paint into a false sense of security. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't have any tips, barely I know myself. Um, and Dave was a good job this ain't live, Moz, yeah. Right, so, anyways. Um, first off, as I said, try and keep to mixing the product with the with their brothers and sisters, okay? That's one of the one of the, the main rules I find. Vallejo, um, yeah, use their thinners, but also um, if you're using the their model paint that isn't specifically for airbrushing, um, there's a tip out there that you should try and use the flow improver. Apparently, that's really good. There is a guy who does the um, the um, uh, airbrushing, and he he uses flow improver instead. But I personally, because I I don't really have model. Uh, Vallejo model paints. So I have their model air range, and that's basically it. That's all I have. So, how I mix paint, just to start off with, there's three ways I mix paint. So, um, if I undo this yellow pot here, you will see the Tamiya. Yeah, I understand that now. Yeah, I got it after. I was forgetting the paint. Yeah, good job. Yeah, I, I thought I had it all together, but I didn't. So, now, 
as a general rule, I buy these and these are for clearing your nails, but these are actually very good for opening paints and also for uh, stirring with because at one end you've got that which is like a, a little cup sort of thing and then I have this here which has got little grooves in it which is good for stirring paint and the reason I like it is because you can pull the paint up so if you've got a little bit in the bottom and you want to stir it you stir it and you can lift it up and it will and it will really really give the paint a really really good mix like so And you can actually see then by just putting it on the side you can see that it's sticking you know the paint is pretty well mixed in that in that point there that's one way of mixing now Tamiya brought out their own which is um, like a paint stirrer and um, basically it's got the same you've got that little cup on the end and you've got a big wedge here for stirring with uh, where's me I'm doing a bit of crap tonight. Baby wipes. Baby wipes. Baby wipes are key. I like a baby wipe. Get that cleaned up there so it's nice and clean. Good. So it's not going to make a mess. That'll do. So this one here, you got your flat blade at the side, and then you can mix the paint like so, and that gives it a really good stir. And then just keep lifting up, do like a figure of eight sort of motion just to get the paint all nicely stirred up. That's one way of doing that one. But the method I've been using mostly in the last couple of days, or should I say a couple of weeks, is the Badger Stirrer. So basically you stir your paint up using this. It's got like a star end to it, like a, like um, a hexagon on the end. And as you can see, I've used it quite a bit. It's a bit dirty now. Um, but yeah, and it, it's very, very straight. It's a very, very good. And if you put it in into the into the pot, it will stir. And you get in all the angles. And there, it mixes the paint. These are very good, but they are pricey though for what they are. You know, I remember buying these as a kid to do milkshakes with, you know, with that little springy thing on the end. That's basically what it is. Um, just looking in the chat, um, I chance uh, writes, I tend to use a rather odd shaking action that my wife thinks is a bit weird, though a few times I've launched the odd pot around the man cave. <laughs> yeah, you can do that. You can do the old general shaky, shaky, but. I don't think it, you know, it doesn't quite get, you know, you want to get here. This is where you want is to get this off the bottom. And yet you can shake it. But I think you need to get in all, you know, get all that, all that pigment out the bottom into the actual mix itself. And you can shake it. It's the same with all of these. Um, God, he's tight, that one. Ah, this is that number 11 that's really, really bad, isn't it? It's not too bad. It's a little bit thick. But I'm just going to show you this one here. This one's been settled for a while. And uh, we'll get the mixer. And then I'll put it in. And then we'll mix. Hope I'm not in the way too much. Let's try and... There you go. Lift it up and down, up and down, so that you're getting all that all that pigment off the bottom. You will get a little bit of splash. Because it's only acrylics, it doesn't really matter. It comes off with water, doesn't it? And you can see it's really starting to, to cover now. around the bottom and there you go see that gloopy mess and there let's get the old baby wipe out give it a bit of a, a rub down 
this actually has some skin. Can you see that? It's actually pulled out the skin. And you can see that there was some, some dried paint in there. And it's actually pulled out that, that, that top layer of skin at the bottom. And that's that silver all mixed up. So that can you see how good it mixes it up proper nice little silver look there number 11 humbro and there get my hands my hands are a bit yellow now a bit colored so yeah those are the three ways that i actually um mix paint there's other ways you can um you can give it a good shake now um a lot of people put um what they you know an agitator in the actual in the actual paint as well so if you get like a fresh tin this one's fresh which one's fresh that one's fresh in it 65 let's look at 65 i'm not too i don't know about this method i think there's merit in the method but i'm not too sure what you know how it would really let's get this off around the side basically it's for if you want to just shake by hand I think I like to see that shaking action though Chancer I really would us men seem to get a lot of practice Pull that off. right so these pots, I, I don't particularly like these pots. I know, I think when I see when I get a pot like this, I'm always thinking, you know, it's a, you know, there's that dodgy paint. Um, and so you can either flick it from the top, like so, you get it open. Yeah. Or you can unscrew it at the side. If I which one unscrewed, there he goes. Or you can unscrew it and take the, the top right off with these paints. Yeah, see that? There's like a thread inside. Hmm, there's a bit of dryness in there. These these have been around a while, I think. But I bought them brand new, but they don't seem to really work. Oh, you know, they, they seem to um, harden up a little bit. Does the unused paint resettle down after you finish with it, or does that stir until change it for good? No, you've got to keep stirring paint. Do not leave paint. You know, even after an hour, you know, give it a quick stir. Um, well, yeah. Well, if it's, I think it's all about the um, the consistency of the paint as well, because say you've got it, you've got a little tub here, and you've got paint in it, and um, and you you painted something, you're leaving it for ten minutes to dry, or you know, fifteen minutes to dry, and you've got some left in here, you know, you give that a good, you know, you get your brush and give it a good mix, you'll be fine. But obviously, that that pigment will settle, and um, yeah, this one's looking a bit. See, this is this was straight from the shop. This one, and it doesn't look too too special. You just uh, see that it's is a is a see that what I mean is it's just all that like straight from the shop. That one, that's a shame, isn't it? It's very very thick. It might need to be thinned down. This one. See what I mean? It's, it is. This is straight from the shop, so you can see these these tubs are not very good at all. I think the air gets into them somewhere. We'll try and mix it up. It's thick. That is mega thick. I don't suppose it's supposed to be that thick. Get round using the old matchstick. Look at that. It's going to need some thinners in that one. That, that's incredible, isn't it? But this is what you've got, you know, this is what I'm saying. When you see humble paint and you see it in these sort of pots, try and shy away. Try and shy away. Put that one in the bin there. I'm trying to find which I could shake for you. So you can see. Let's try this one. This one's a... This one's a brand new one. This one, these paints here, these three here, are for the... Um, uh, Hellcat I'm doing, is it Wildcat I'm doing or Hellcat I'm doing? So when it's like that, what I tend to do with this is snip the back because I want the lid to be loose. So I get my snips and 
just snip the back so I can just pull this off I prefer that sort of, that sort so what you do is you get the your little glass ball or you get a little ball bearing but be careful because you don't want the ball bearing to rust and you put that in the paint and then you put that on top and then you can hear it that ball helps mix the paint can you hear that Right, let's pull this off. And there it is, the paint's mixed. There's a car outside with his music blaring. So, yeah, so that's the paint mix there with the ball bearing in. And it is a good technique because you've got the ball bearing to bang against and, you know, really agitate the paint. The way I shake it is to hold the pot, turn my wrist down towards a 90 degree angle, then oscillate side to side to a 100 degree arc, like, like this. Is that how you do it? Yeah. There you go. Oh, don't shake. So that's one another way of mixing up your paints. If you get these ones, these dropper bottles, I wouldn't recommend putting a ball in there, but um, what I would recommend is putting um, a, a marine, a marine style or a marine protected washer in there instead. Um, just hang on yourself carefully without it spilling everywhere. There you go. You can put like a marine washer in there. It's very small, and that marine washer you can use it as a shaker. But I wouldn't use a ball because if you have a ball, it can catch to the very end and block and block it up as you're trying to get paint out. I think the owl, the owl clads that I've got, which is here, I think these come with a ball bearing in them as well. I must start using these. I haven't used these yet, but I will do. You give them a shake. Can you hear that? There's a ball, belt ball bearing in there, and it proper shakes them up. There's a few ball bearings in that one, and that shakes. This is this is enamel. This one. This is. Give it a good shake, so you can see that the, all the all the all the sediment is hit. If I do it that way, it's all the sediment that's hit the bottom there. So there you go. You can. This one's going to need a really good shake because this hasn't been opened yet. And you can see by using those ball bearings, it helps with the um, helps with the mix. Is putting a ball bearing in or something in metal that's not going to rust into the pot, so that it actually gives it a clean. All right, just um, what I'm gonna do. Let's put a little bit of. Um, IP alcohol in. Take it off. Tiny bit of um, alcohol. And put that in. To give it a mix. You see that the way it, the way it's doing like a vortex. That basically cleans up the the end, so it's nice and clean. Brilliant. Right. Any tips that you have on um, cleaning or mixing paint? Let me know. I will be doing a review on this one because I have got a trumpeter one coming as well, and I'm going to do a side by side to see what, how they how they you know how they operate, how they both work. But once you get one of these, it's very difficult to go back because once you got it, you keep using it. And it is a very good bit of kit. It comes off at the end. There's like a little slot there on the very end. You find the slot, push it in, and then it goes. So if you do end up bending these, you can buy these separately. These arms, you can buy them separately. And they have got, they have got some power to them.
yeah. Very, very good tool. I think I pay twenty pounds, including including postage, mind. Um, but I think they're about sixteen ninety nine, about three pound postage on them. But once you have one, they, they come. With, you know, you have to put two two um, two batteries in. No, nope, hasn't quite gone in. Find the glue. There you go. And there you go. Not a bad bit of kit indeed. Got some crap on there. So that is the Badger Paint Stirrer, and they're well worth the money to buy. All right. Right. So that's basically some tips there on how I do my my mixing and my paint, and that includes if you if you've got a little pot and you want to. Um, you know do your mix for your um, airbrush you can do the same put your drops in put your thinner in and then use that to mix it or you just use um, you can either use the Tamiya paint stirrer I bought 10 of these for two quid on eBay and I've used these a hell of a lot you know so I've got them all around the place and I do I pick them and it's only because of that I don't want to get close um, it's because I'm gonna do that you can see there's like little ridges on the end and doing that motion where you're going in out, in out, in out, shake it all about, it does look like, you know, it does mix up the paint really, really well, better than just using a matchstick. Because you say, you, 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 as you're pulling up, you, you gain this, like some suction sort of thing, so it just keeps the mix going. So it's something definitely it's worth having. Um, but I think there are cheap, I think there's a cheaper way. I'm, I'm tempted to go down. I know that Audi do, or not Audi, a home bargain do that, that little, it's like a black handle thing it's got like um like a spring on the end whether you could adapt one of them to make it into a paint mixer so you don't have to buy that's all it is it's that that's basically what you're buying is that and then you have to try and make that piece to go in the end but i'll see how i get on i'll buy one and see all right so yeah um this came through today which i th really really want to have a go at with this one i hope i don't know yeah yeah this is a paint marker. This one is, the, if you can see on the end, it's the chrome one, chrome silver. And I want to use this because I want to see how well it does with chipping on the paint, you know, so you can get like a chipping sort of effect. So I will be doing a video on this one when I do my my Mustang, which is it's not my Mustang. This one here. It's now had it. It's had it like um, it's had a green kind of primer sprayed on. Just to give it some bite. Um, as you can see, the pilot's all covered over with my foam. So this is all ready now. So what I will attempt to do now is I'm going to paint it um, um, 1, 2, 3, and 2, 4, 1. So it'll be 2, 4, 1, all, uh, 1, 2, 3 all over, and then 2, 4, 1 over the top. And then I'll have um, the Sky 90 underneath ready. And then hopefully that will then, I'm going to hopefully spray, um, paint that this weekend when i've got time and that hopefully then will be start to the end of finishing this build so i'll put the engine on the propeller on etc so that's that one sorted this one here right yeah this one here is had its gloss coat um i'm not i'm not ashamed to say that i use this stuff to put a gloss finish on something like you know just so i can get the decals on it is what it is. It's very quick. Go it once, twice, and that's it. Let it settle, and then do it again. But um, I did it because there was something going on in the conservatory. I did it outside. Oh, I just bent that. Screw that one back in. Um, stick that back in later. I don't know if you can see this. There's slight, very, very slight, um, like peeling effect on here. So I'm going to have to rub this back down, unfortunately. Um, and I think it's because it was too cold. It was too cold. The door was open and it wasn't very warm. It wasn't very warm at 11 o'clock the other night. And I think the coldness caught it, unfortunately. So I'm going to just rub this back down just enough. Then give it, see if I can get the gloss coat on top of that. I'll screw that one back in. I'll have to screw that one back in. Glue that one back in again. Push him in and twist. There you go. Screw him back in. But that was repaired. Um, I put a little tiny piece of um, styrene underneath, put some glue in, made sure it was nice and tight, and then pushed down 
and that glued it in place that's, that's almost solid this one here needs another bit of glue I might even do the same what I did this side is just put a little bit of styrene in there to bond to the end of the uh, the leg there and hopefully that will be enough to uh, to get that sorted so that's the plan I assume that when they designed this it was supposed to go up and down because I can't see why they have that extra that little piece there like it fits in just under like that so I assume that there was a way you could push this up and push this down I don't know I'm just putting it out there but it's a very strange sort of setup but I'll glue that back in and that's a the decals were started on here this one's coming on well um, all the I've got the um, the first one there and the navy underneath I've done the tails the tails were a little bit big can you see that the actual I'm gonna have to trim them off carefully but using the mark um, the mark fix by Tamiya that's really embedded you can even still even the um, the flap line there has come through really nicely I can you see that on the camera it's really come through nice they have shrunk a little bit but yeah they will need a slight trim because they've just overlapped slightly um i've put the go faster stripes down the side there's the first 300 and then i run out of time unfortunately last night um i'm going to put the next one there there's quips there's quite a few to go on and then once they're all done that will be then matted out because i want it as a matte finish on this one um and and you see that that marking's gone it's really that's quite fresh that's done by the perfect plastic putty that was all done i'm gonna um once it's all done there i'm just gonna paint around here chrome this edge here just gonna paint the chrome on this one and then this one will be complete by putting on the the gearing underneath and that will be done and that's that last plane and i'm quite chuffed with that one that one's coming on really well had quite a bit of filler on the front as you see there's a massive gap there where it, joined together but now that gap's gone it's looking pretty pretty swell and i'll say i've got to use these ones here um that 300 the i want to instead of using the, that color then i'm going to use the darker version and then captain um brian cag i think that's called is that right right yeah put the brian his name there on it as well so yeah that's the plan for that that's nearly all done um, yeah, I've sorted that one. That one's done, and I think we're up to date with the model so far. As I say, it's a very slow progress. I've not had the time I thought I'd have, but it, I, I will get there in the end, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, get there in the end. Um, I wonder where they came from. Anyways. Right, I don't think there's much else. Ah, this, um, let's talk about this kit, shall we? Um, there's a, there's a group build happening soon. And so I wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, you know, in like, you know, there's certain planes and certain vehicles that weren't really produced, mass, mass produced. And, um, this one is one of them that was never mass produced but it looks like a really nice helicopter it's the RAH66 Comanche by Tamiya um, let's have a look what's there on the side and say a lot apparently doesn't say a lot it's from the Warbird collection uh, if you want to buy it it's um where's the number for it 60739 these bags are getting tighter oh Yeah, put your video out there, Chancer. Definitely, put your put your video out there. Just get you on. And if you want to come on this one, you're quite welcome to jump on if you want. We can do a build together. A baggy's doing a a, a Zoom hangout tonight with his family for a quiz. So, 
There it is. That is the plane. Look at the look at the angles on there, man. That is a that is an impressive bit of um. That is quite impressive. Basically, it's two pieces on the on the plane itself, on the on the plane on the helicopter itself. The propellers in four pieces, uh, one, two, five pieces actually, five propeller pieces there. There's some gear in there. See, that's pretty smart. I'm chuffed to bits with that. I suppose that that's the rear fire, a uh, rear propeller. There's the top propeller there. Nice bit there on the back. Then I'm just looking at the detail for the cockpit, and I can't see any, unfortunately. This there's not a lot of cockpit detail on this one. Ah, there's the cockpit there, isn't it? Yeah, a couple of screens there. But this is going to be my next build for the uh, group group build. Not a lot really on this one to do. Two pilot seats there, front and rear. Just looking in out. Uh, so all from A set B2. The straps on the chairs. Just look at the straps on the chairs. Oh, there were straps on there. Just detail the straps on the chair. I thought you had to put them in yourself. Just looking at the uh, shape and design of it. I just think it just looks pretty smart. The Comanche lends itself to a what-if build. You could find some nice decals for it. Maybe fleet air arm. Yeah, that might be a chance. I'll have to look at that. I'm trying to see when, what, when, when it was actually... Um, when it was actually released. Um, Comanche. There it is. So let's see what, uh, when has he go? I oh, see Rebel did one. Rebel's done a copy of it. Um, Italiari did one in 1999. So looks like, uh, Yeah, Italiari, Italiari. I don't. Oh, there it is. Hazigawa brought theirs out in two thousand and one. This was a two thousand and one model, so it's twenty years old. This one. Um. So, ah, so it is the Italiari. So Italiari brought it out first. Then Testa's reboxed it. Tammy has reboxed it. Um. Kitex reboxed it. Revels reboxed it. Then Italiari's boxed it ever since. So really it's one tooling and it's been used by one, two, three, four, five manufacturers. So Italiari had it first. Okay. Italiari. Italiari. What I say Italiari. Because I just remember them being called Italiari. They were I'm sure they were, you know, if you want to People say to me, I've never heard of them being called Italiari. There's the proof. Look, Italiari. Italiari. See? That's an, this is a Thunderstreak, this one. F, F84F. And I swear that I, and I'd still call it that now, but it's a Tallery, isn't it? It's a Tallery. Silly sod that I am. So, yeah. So basically, this has been around the block a few times, this this tooling, but to me, it just looks good in this box. I think they've done a cracking job with the with the moulding. I suppose there's going to be some rivet rivet uh, counters out there who will probably tell me there's lots wrong with it. But, you know, for what it is, I don't know, I think it was how many parts is it even? Does it say how many parts it is? No. I don't know how many parts it is. Uh, just looking through. Hmm, 45. Yeah, there's not many parts there at all for what it is. But it's just something I'd like to have a go at. You know, I don't, I've don't. i not done many helicopters in my time. 
there's the decals there, very, very slim pickings on decals. Because I suppose, is that, is that zoomed in? I don't even notice I'm using 4K tonight on the stream to see if that helps my uh, my impression rate. <laughs> but yeah, some nice decals there. General Gordon R. Sullivan, he's the pilot. So yeah, that's uh, that's really where it's where we're at with that one. So that's my next build, and I might even start that on the channel once I get. I, I, hopefully, when Baggies comes back, I'll carry on more doing the. Um, the um, demon, the hawker demon. We'll get that sorted hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Um, he'll come on board and we'll carry on doing that. Just want to make sure I put everything away in this bag. Let me just check, make sure I put the decals back in here. Yeah, there they are, the decals are back. So that's another build of the what ifs. I, I don't know whether anybody looks at other people's websites. The mini art have. Um, Bought out a new um, a new kit for a, a what a tiff. Um, trying to find what it was called now. Um, it was on there. It was in in their um, email today. It's like a rocket with a propeller halfway through. It was a German design, but you can have the decals with. Um, with uh, RAF on them, which looks pretty funky, but it was like a what if of if it ever came to into um, into production. It was, I think it was designed in '43. It was never actually made. There was just prototypes that they found after the war of this particular model. Um, you know, I had it here, and now I can't find it. So I was going to say and mention it because I, I am tempted to buy one just to have a look. Um, no, it's not that email. No, nope, I've seen the French ones. Yeah, it was the vertical takeoff and landing jet fighter. Let's get a picture up on my phone so I can get a bigger picture. I'll do it like that. There it is. Can you see that in the camera there? A Fokker Wolf. Is that Treb? Fluger, Flugel, the old jet fighter. Comes with photo etch, and you got your, your German and your American uh, flags there. Even your Russian flags, it's got your, your, your German symbols there. And you can, there's six, I think there's six, yeah, there's six, six different um, finishes you can do. That, um, well, you know, with the, um, with the um, with the greens and the dark earth and everything, it's all it looks pretty smart with the red. So, yeah, that if I did do it, I'll probably build that one just for the crack. But yeah, I've got all that one on orders, so that's what it's called. It's um, uh, I don't know how you say. It. Is it Treble Flugel? The captured Treble 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 Flugel. In I'll find out. I'll do a Google Translate and see what it means. But it was captured in the service of the Royal Air Force 1947. But it never was made. It was all a little bit, um, you know, bit of fun really. Bit of design work. Right. Sorry it's a bit of a shorter chat this week, gentlemen. Uh, this evening, I should say. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you do like the video, click like, obviously. Um, if you can uh, tell your friends if they're into modelling and they want to watch a live stream, come and join us and chat. You know, I'm always open to hear what people have to say. Um, also, if you want to come and join me in the chat, you know, actually come on and with your workbench, put a camera up and we can talk together. Um, I use Skype and we put it through the, um, through the, um, through the, through the Mac there. But I am looking at getting a Windows PC to do it easier because Mac just seems to be hard work. So we can do that. We can start building together. I'm happy with that. I'll have a chat. Um, I am going to do one week, uh, one day a week. I'm going to do like a new special, like a 20-minute news thing where I tell you about all the new kits I've seen being advertised online, go through them all, see whether they're re-box, re, -box, re if it's just a change of box shape but the decals are the same, try and do some real interest in that respect sort of thing. Because I did do a few news um, live feeds, like when Airfix 
um, did the uh, release of the uh, Vulcan when they when all that was leaked as well when they when somebody put out the print for the scale model magazine and I did a leak on that one and uh, and also the lineup for the quick builds as well so I've done these sort of news story ones if you go back through the live ones you'll see them there but yeah I'm hopefully going to be looking at doing something like that as well anyways thank you very much for joining me this evening and um, hopefully I'll be back on Monday with um, some completed models because I am I am focused this weekend to get two out of the five models that I've got going um, completed and I can start another two. Um, I don't know how you do it. I suppose you're the same. You have three or four models on the go and you pick one up, you do a bit and put it down again. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen, or just gentlemen, or just ladies. And I'll see you on Monday. Cheers.